Hello, my name is David Stevens. I am the Applications Manager for Universal Laser Systems, and today we're going to go through some techniques on specifically setting up graphics for your Universal Laser Systems. To do so, you're going to need a software to create that, and we're going to go through a pretty common software called Adobe Photoshop. Uh, this is Adobe Photoshop Elements. Elements is a, a more inexpensive version than the final version. Uh, or the full version, if you will. Um, this is version 8. Any version will work. Most of these techniques and stuff that I'm going to show you uh, are available on virtually any version. This program allows you the capability to go through and process different images and modify different images with a lot of control. There's also a lot of on online content for Photoshop. Uh, Corel Photo Paint also works, uh, but the Photoshop has a lot more tools and features and makes it considerably easier uh, for the, the modification of photos. You can pick up Adobe Photoshop anywhere. Um, Amazon, CDW, it's about $69. You can pick it up um, um, and uh, basically install it and work in tandem with any other software uh, for for uh, photo editing as well. Now, the process uh, to go through this is going to be basically showing you a couple of the different tools. We're not going to cover everything, but we're going to cover enough stuff to basically get you uh, powerful enough or, or uh, the capability to modify those graphics and get them to a level that can be engraved when they need to be that way. Um, to get graphics, um, there's a couple different locations that I would recommend. If you don't actually have a graphic or you're wanting a specific graphic, you can get uh, different graphics at different some websites such as Dreamstime. Uh, these are software sites that uh allow a high resolution graphics or photography to actually be purchased or in a lot of cases they're free. Another site is Shutterstock. Um, these are two of the most common sites that are commonly used for downloading a high resolution digital SLR photography. High resolution graphics are recommended. Low res graphics tend to produce very poor quality and that is going to be the case if, if you end up using a low res graphic. Meaning, for example, if you have a one inch by one inch engraved object, you don't want that, uh, in, uh, the, the resolution of that object needs to be uh, approximately a half a megapixel. And as you go up to say a four by six uh, inch engraving, uh, you need to be approximately two megapixels, all the way up to about 12 by 12 uh, where you need to be right around 8 megapixels. So the higher the resolution of your graphic, the better the overall graphic uh, quality output is going to be. And software such as Adobe Photoshop won't necessarily improve it. So if I have a low resolution graphic such as this, you can see I can zoom into it. It's extremely blurry, grainy. Um, this type of graphic is not going to look good on, say, a 12 by 12 tile. It's going to be blown up much, much greater than this. Low resolution, low pixel pixel style uh, versus something like this which is you know 12 15 megapixel you can zoom into it it's very clear very precise and you got very very high quality graphics so a couple of the different techniques that we're going to go through in Photoshop I'm going to open up a couple different samples here or photos and then we're going to go through these photos these photos will kind of give you an idea of some basic techniques and what needs to be done to those techniques take this photo for example if I were to engrave this as is I would get a, a, a uh, a finished result that isn't probably very satisfactory. Uh, I've recently engraved this exact graphic and then I modified it through the through Photoshop and then I engraved it again as well and actually I engraved them both at the same time. If I actually click on the graphic that I engraved, this is a photograph of anodized aluminum on the left side was as is. I took, I did nothing to the graphic. It was very dark, and I engraved it as is. On the right side here, I modified it through Photoshop, and I engraved both of these at the same time, same settings. So there was no difference in power, speeds, or or laser settings whatsoever. As you can see on the right side, with just a few minutes of Photoshop editing, I get a much more uh, satisfactory graphic. It's not perfect, of course, because it's a pretty low-res graphic. Um, there's still some shadowing and some shading in there, um, but overall it's far better than the, the uh um, the, the original graphic. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the tools necessary to reproduce a lot of these techniques and we're going to uh, go through these one at a time so that you get a good understanding what needs to be done to do these techniques. The first one is that we need to be able to adjust see the size. So as I said earlier, when we have a small, low-resolution image, what we need to do is know how big that image actually is. And so if we go to Image, 
which is the drop down menu right here on the upper taskbar. And then we go down to resize and then image size. And there's also a quick key right here, which is the Alt plus Control plus I. But if you select on image size, this is going to tell you the approximate resolution and size of the graphic. So this, this image is 8 inches wide by 5.333 inches high at 300 dpi. So it's not bad in resolution. However, if you were to take this image to example double the size of the overall height and width, the resolution would then be 150. Because resolution is your dots per inch. Dots per inch is dpi and the more dots per inch that you have, the higher the resolution is. If you drop the size in half, your resolution drops in half. This can be upsampled or enhanced with some softwares, but it never is as good as the original graphic itself. So know what size of graphics you have um, and what the resolution of the graphic it is. If it's a very, very large graphic at a low resolution and you drop that size in half, the resolution will double. So if you have a very big in size and low in resolution, you can very easily drop that and still get the image clarity and quality. So. What we can do now is I'm going to basically show you a couple different tools to modify this picture to get the exact sample as I showed you before. As you can see, before and after. The first thing I'm going to need to do is brighten up the graphic itself. So I'm going to go to Enhance, Adjust Lighting, and then Levels. What this allows you to do, or Control plus L, this allows you to basically manipulate the graphics tone curve. So I can come in and I can say I need it to be brighter, I need the, the brightness and the contrast to be basically adjusted. And you can move this around so that you get effect. But right here in the middle, as you can see right here where the circle is is uh, uh, flashing, is the gamma correction or mid-tones correction. This is the one we want to mess with because I don't want the brights to be any brighter or the darks to be any darker. I want the mid-tones or the light, uh, the, 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 the um, the, the mid-spectrum of the graphic itself to be uh, brought out. And as you can see, the further to the left I bring that, the, the more it brings up until it gets almost extreme. So you're going to bring this up to where basically we're compensating for the level of incorrect light that was originally taken on the photo, but there's enough data there that actually achieves um, the brightness that is can be brought out of it. And sometimes this is not the case, it depends on the photograph, uh, but I will bring this up to a visual level. Um, there's no right or wrong number on this, what looks good, and then hit OK. Another thing that I'm going to typically do is I'm going to uh, convert this to grayscale. By converting to grayscale, I get more of a, a visual representation of what it's going to look like engraved. For example, the sample that we have already run is in grayscale. There's no color represented to it as well. So to do that, we need to go into grayscale, and we're going to click on image again, which is the drop-down menu at the top right here, mode, and then we're going to click on grayscale. When we select this grayscale here, it's going to disregard all colors. Different RGB colors such as red, greens, blues will typically be the same look in grayscale. So converting it to grayscale will give you the true uh, effect that is needed in order to represent what the engraving is going to look like. So now, now taking the image and adjusting the lighting is giving us, getting us probably 80, 90 percent of the way there. I could engrave this as is and probably get away with a decent result. But I'm going to show you a, a few different tools that basically allow you to uh, improve upon it even more. And the next one that is is the dodge tool. We have two different tools. One was called the dodge tool and one is a burn tool. The dodge tool basically works whatever uh, mid-tone range is in, in anything and basically allows us to lighten a specific area of the graphic. Um, this is where the dodge tool is located. When you see the little black flyout here, you click and hold and it's going to give you a flyout menu. And in here we have the dodge tool. This dodge tool basically allows us to come into a graphic, we can then change our main toolbar above the top here. We got our size. This is the size of the graphic uh, control tool itself. I'm going to modify it so that I have a little bit more uh, um, necessary size for what I'm doing. Also, the range is the midtones. Again, midtones we want to work with. Uh, highlights and, and shadows can be worked on, but I prefer the midtones. It's what the laser likes. It gives those tone curves necessary to the laser engrave. And then lastly is the exposure. 
the exposure is basically how much pressure is necessary to, and how much effect we're making. Subtle changes are necessary. I recommend under 20% on the exposure. We want to make subtle changes. The ultimate goal is to look like nothing was done with this. You know, make it look like the photographer or the photo t was taken with correct lighting, and so or the, the photographer did their job correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to size it down, and then we're going to adjust uh, the bright, bright areas of her face. There's a lot of shadow in here, and we, we need to go across and bring those shadows out. And as you can see, there's very subtle changes being made on the graphic. And you can go over it how you see fit. But I'm going to hit Control-Z, and I'm going to undo it, and then redo it. So just show you basically before and after what I just did. And as you can see, before and after, there is a very subtle difference. Um, though that, that shadowing effect would have been sunken in. You couldn't hardly see it. And now it almost looks like the lighting has been changed in the, the, the spectrum of the graphic, just by selecting the Dodge tool and going over that specific area. Any area that has a lot of shadowing, darkness, and effect, if it's pure black, this will not work. Um, but if there is just a subtle amount of shadowing, shading uh, that needs to be adjusted, we can quickly and easily do that. Now, to the opposite of that is the burn tool. Same area, same tool here. It's in the burn area, as you can see here with the circle. Select on the burn tool. Same thing on the top toolbar, below 20% on the, on the exposure the range, midtones, and the size of the, the actual affected uh, area that we're going to do. So basically we're, what we're going to do is we're going to actually select a size of the graphic here and the midtones and the exposure. And by going over, say, this area of the table, it doesn't look like it even hardly needs to be done, but you can see there's a lot of depth that was in this area that wasn't there before. And again, I'm going to undo this, Control-Z, Control-Z, before and after. And as you can see, there's a lot of te texture and grain and uh, detail that was not missing. And I'm going to click the Zoom tool, which is the little, little magnifying glass up here, or you can hit the letter Z, and I'm going to zoom here. And I'm going to undo before and after, so you can really see what's happened. So... Those two tools, basically we've, what we have done so far is we have gone through the tools and showed you how to, to adjust the image size and look at the image size. We've turned, uh, we went to image mode and then grayscale to adjust the crop. Uh, we have adjusted the levels and then we adjusted the midtones. And then we've done the dodge and the burn tool, which are both, both located right here, dodge and burn. Um, to zoom back out, select your zoom tool again, right mouse button click and click fit on screen and we are now back to our full field. Now this image itself, that's about it. That's all I really did on that graphic in order to get the effect that, that you've seen here. Uh, all I did at that point is I ran it through one touch laser photo using the anodized aluminum setting on both cases, uh, the before and after it, and then I engraved them both at the same time on the same piece of material using the same machine. So th that was it. And now uh, that, that's basically cleaning up brightness and contrast, darkened areas and stuff like that. Now for blemish repair, and repair times where you actually need to uh, fix something or modify something. Uh, there's a few other different uh, tools that we're going to cover. Um, first one is that I'm going to cover right here is the healing tool. The healing brush tool is a convenient little, little bugger for something like this. And you can see this poor kid has a problem. And I have the solution to that problem, and too bad this don't work in reality. What it is, it looks like a little band-aid right up here in the upper left-hand corner. You can hit the letter J, which is the quick key to it. It is, looks like a band-aid. It's called the Spot Healing Tool or Spot Healing Brush Tool. When you select on this tool, what it will basically allow you to do is go over a specific area, pending that the textures around it are similar. In this case, it's a face or if it's grass or it's a, you know, water or a background pattern or in, in some generalized pattern. What it basically does is it allows the, the uh, system to identify everything around it. And when you let go of that, it effectively eliminates it. And as you can see there, I'm going to zoom into the object before and after. And if I do it again here close up, you can see really what's happening. 
we basically go over the infected area, whether this be a scratch in the photo or whether it be a, uh, a pimple in this case. <laughs> it, it actually proximity matches the surrounding area and uh, applies the same texture and surrounding area to that. Now, if you didn't quite get it, you can, you can then take other swipes around it and keep doing that, which will blend it. And each time, there, there, there. And as you can see, very, very easily taking out uh, everything from a scratch to a pimple to a, a wound or anything like that uh, and, and applying a, a, a clean healing effect, basically. Like I say, I wish it was available in reality. So now that we can clean wounds, we can modify certain every, uh, other things. This is, a, this is great for those areas. Now, it, it works great in a texturized area such as a face or when you have a background pattern. But if I were to take this same tool, say, close to the hairline right here, what will happen is it will immediately reproduce that hairline. So you've got to be careful wh where you use this tool. And I'm going to undo that. And uh, I'm going to go to another tool that we can use when we have a very specific pattern that we need to carry. We need to actually move something or eliminate something out of a field. Here's a good example where I have a good, solid, consistent background pattern. I have a couple of twin sailboats here. Um, what if I wanted to actually keep the, the, the water in this case and remove the little, uh, little dinghy out front of these two sailboats? This is where I'm going to use a feature called the Clone Stamp Tool. You can hit the letter S, or you can plus, uh, select it from the toolbar on the left side here. It looks like a little, little ink stamp. When you select this tool, it's basically going to do kind of similar to the Healing Brush Tool, but it allows you to actually select where you want to put the, pick the image and then move it to. So again, from the top bar, we have a lot of different controls. Really, the only one you want to affect is the, uh, the size of the tool you want to work with. And so I want to produce a, a good enough size to where I, I can get effect. Now, to, for this to work, what I need to do is click and ho click the Alt key on your keyboard, the ALT Alt key. And when I click that Alt key, it's going to give me a little crosshairs. Now, while holding the Alt key, you can then click with your mouse button. So I'm going to click right here. And then I'm going to let go of the Alt B key and the mouse. And so basically what that's done is it's programmed that spot to be reproduced where I then click and hold. So now I'm going to click and hold with my mouse. And as you can see, the little arrow on the top where I originally did the Alt click, now when I go over the top of that, it's reproducing that pattern above it down below. And as I go over, I can effectively eliminate that. Now if I don't want the same effect, I can Alt click again in a different area and I can re readjust and you can alt click again and you can keep doing this until you get the desired effect that you want and as you can see I've completely eliminated the little dinghy boat off of there and the patterns and waves and everything else are, are uh, basically gone it's reproduced one area to the other this can be done in a small scale it can be done in large scale depending on the overall size of the graphic that is done and as you can see uh, as I had one uh, uh, um, student actually tell me that it was the X remover. <laughs> it allowed him to, to remove the ex-wife or the ex-boyfriend or the ex-girlfriend from the photos very quickly and effectively. So, you know, whatever you want to call it, it is uh, definitely a convenient tool for use with this. But not for just removing stuff. We can also relocate. Um, and that's a convenient fact. And so say we're, we're taking this, this cute little kitty and I want to convert this, this image into a postcard. Well, I want to put text on one side and move that kitty over to a different location so that I can put that text. Maybe it's a plaque, maybe it's an engraving, maybe it's just a printout on your printer as a postcard. So I will use the same tool, the clone stamp tool, and I'm going to click far over on this side and then I'm going to start going over the top. And again, you can see the arrow on the right side reproduce the area over the top. Now as I keep holding the mouse down and keep going over the top, it's going to remember where that little kitty used to be. And what it's going to allow me to do is continue and actually replace that cat where it was in this case. So as you can see, I've effectively relocated the cat. I do have a few um, little flowers here that are that are little twins, so that's usually a dead giveaway that it's been photoshopped. So you can alt click in a different location here, and say, "Hey, I want to get rid of these two flowers here to to basically eliminate um, the the look of repetitiveness." And there's nothing that's exactly ex 
the same in, in a natural environment. So uh, if the cat's not in the right location, you can do it again. Click over here and say, well, uh, I would need to push it right here. I need to put the cat, you know, right to the edge. And so I just want it right off the edge to where it looks like it's off the field. So as you can see, and again, Alt, click, click with your mouse, and then place it over, over the top here. And you can keep playing around with it until you get the effect that you want, get rid of the flowers you don't want. Um, yeah, until you get the effect you want. But effectively, this is a very, very nice technique for doing these things. Um, those are the three or four little tools that I'm going to cover. Um, there's only one other tool that um, that uh, is convenient as well in here is the crop tool. Uh, you can come in and actually crop out the graphic itself and and get rid of a specific area. The crop tool is located right here. You can hit the letter C, and it'll turn that crop tool on. The convenient about it is just like our, uh, the latest version of OneTouch will have this as well, OneTouch Laser Photo. But you can actually put in a width and a height. You can click the little button in the middle, and you can switch those numbers. And you can put in a resolution if you want. So if I want it 250 DPI, and I want a height of 7, 7 inch by 5 inches, and I want to go over this and actually put this sailboat within that field, I can effectively very quickly crop that and then by using the, um, the the previous tools which I just showed you the clone stamp I can get rid of this if I want to just by selecting this alt click here and eliminate so as you can see very very effective type stuff uh, you can also have a lot of fun on it go back to our original graphic you can click on your little tools here you can have fun with your kids you can this is always a fun one to do is with the alt tool or the, the clone stamp tool. You can make a three-eyed monster here. There we go. Fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, but as you can see, very, very easy to do. Um, there are a, a few other thing and we'll get rid of the lady's uh, third eye here and there but uh, any one of the graphics can be done not all graphics need to necessarily be run through Photoshop uh, only when they have a dark area or you want to remove something or there's a blemish if the photo is of high quality as I showed you early if I if I were to have a photo like this there's nothing I would do with it uh, maybe take the dodge tool a little bit and lighten the lapel here so it showed up when I engraved it a little bit uh, maybe crop it out but uh, the one touch laser photo will crop it for you as well well. So it's not necessarily uh, needed. And the two websites that I showed you earlier, dreamstime.com, that's D-R-E-A-M-S-T-I-M-E.com. This basically is a, is a really good site. This, this site basically allows me to download extremely high resolution digital SLR, 300 DPI graphics, and they range between um, a cost of $1 up to about $10, or you can buy an actual membership. Same with Shutterstock. Uh, very similar thing. You can buy a membership. And this allows you to download unlimited graphics of buildings, dogs, babies, uh, examples. Now, they're not going to be exactly the ones you would need for a specific photo or, or a customer. But uh, it will allow you to great, uh, do demos or uh, if somebody wants to, if you want to add a car into something or you need that specific photo, these two sites basically allow you to do it. And there's other sites out there as well. You could even go to the Google Images and Google Images will allow you to do that and pull up so certain images. But be careful. The, uh, uh, the, these are copyright free graphics where Google Images, you never know what you're going to get. Once we have completed any photo editing using Photoshop or Corel Photo Paint, we can then use our one-touch laser photo um, uh, with any graphic we want. This software is, is very nice because you can take those edited graphics, or if, if the, ed, uh, the photos don't actually require any edit or editing, then you can very quickly and easily take any graphic you want and uh, modify them and set them up specifically for laser engraving. Um, this software does allow you to, to, to convert those graphics, to crop those graphics, and we're going to go through some basics here just to give you an understanding of how it works. And the software is pretty self-explanatory. When you open up the software the first time, you're going to go into an open dialog box. So if I click on a folder that I know I have photos on and click on the drop-down menu thumbnails, I can select from any graphic that I want. I can grab and I can size and you can you can adjust it just like any Windows based uh, software. So what I will do is uh, select my graphic uh, in this case uh, whatever it may be wedding shot or something like that. It'll open up the graphic. It's going to size it to whatever size you want and you have a couple different steps here. 
Um, we have a couple of step one, which is optional. You don't have to do it. if it's already been done in Photoshop or another program. You already have it sized and cropped. Uh, then you would only have one step, which is the one touch, basically, which would process that image specifically for a material. Now, um, if you do need to know basically what resolution, size, how it works, you can click the Help button and click on One Touch Laser Photo Help or the F1 key. And then the Help button will pop up onto the screen which indicates what the introduction of how, what it is what minimum requirements but it's also going to go through and kind of explain uh, what what the image and all the features in the driver uh, how it works the, the different options uh, another benefit is it tells you that uh, as i was uh, uh, explaining on the photoshop tutorial the the different resolutions needed for different uh, photo resolution for different sizes i should say so example, 7x9 image is optimal at a 4 megapixel image. It can be higher than that. There's no problem. You don't have to reduce it. You don't have to change it. But if you want the best results for these sizes, it's got to be at least that or higher. So if you have always take your photos with a 12 megapixel camera, you don't really ever have to worry. You can easily handle anything that is from this. Um, but each one of these processes, as you can see, goes through very quickly uh, and explains each step and so this, this option is available for you as you need to uh, use it. But basically, step one uh, is not necessarily uh, needed if you don't need to size, um, but it does allow you to mirror the graphic. You can rotate it if, it, if you want to rotate it 90 degrees if it comes in uh, incorrect uh, uh, rotation aspect. Uh, you can also crop it. So if we decide we want to put this as an oval, and you decide you want that oval to be, you know, 8 by 12, or uh, you can also make it, you know, maybe I want to make this 5 by 7, 5 by 7. I'll type that in. And then it's going to put that oval size wherever you want. And so, But if I want that 5 by 7 to actually encapsulate, I can, I can enlarge it out. And as long as you have this little button checked, resize when cropping, then it will maintain the size and resolution uh, as well as the size at the same time. So I can adjust where I want this crop to be uh, on the graphic. If I want it to be bigger, smaller, make sure I get his hand in there, and then hit Apply Crop, it'll crop to that. It also masks the background away, so when it's inverted, it'll automatically compensate for that black background. When I hit Apply, apply Crop here, it's going to then uh, crop me to that circle. Or in the case, it could be a square, rectangle, uh, oval, or circle. Any one of these processes could be done. Uh, step three uh, is basically select the material that you want to engrave. So if I want to engrave this on wood, I select on wood and apply filter. This will process the image specifically for that material. The, the screen is specifically designed so that the line spacing will work with a standard 2-inch lens when engraving. Now, the display on here is a little bit uh, um, uh, poor of quality, be depending on the resolution that you have your computer monitor set at. Um, but disregard what it looks like on this screen. It will engrave properly. Last step, which is step 4, you want to save your graphic. You can either click the Save button, save it wherever you want uh, as a uh, whatever format you want, and it'll ask you what format. Uh, if I put it on my desktop and hit Save, it's then going to pop up with a, a couple formats here so I can actually uh, do it. Now, it will not allow you to save it out of its format as a JPEG. Now, if you crop it and size it and then hit Save, you can save it as a JPEG. So you can use this as just a crop and size tool if you don't want to use the filter. But our rendering requires an uncompressed graphics, and so the PNG is also a third format that can be used on a lot of graphics software. So we would hit OK and it would save that graphic. You can also, if you use a current universal laser system, which is a VLS or Versa Laser Series, a PLS or a Professional Laser Series, or an ILS or Industrial Laser Series, you can hit print directly. I can print from here and I don't have the driver installed on here, but it will drop, uh, it'll open the printer driver automatically uh, linked to your system and it will um, then select the material that you actually have. So it will be already pre-selected to the wood. All you have to do is select what kind of wood and then uh, how thick and, uh, and then let it continue on. Now, the, the different types of photo engravings and stuff like that are convenient. When, uh, when you engrave with one touch, it very quickly allows you to, to do virtually any type of material. And as you can see on, uh, on the list of materials, which is constantly being added to, these materials are um, probably the most common. Now, you can also hit your File button 
and you can hit software updates. This is a nice feature that basically uh, will allow you to update the software. So as there's new versions coming out of the software, uh, if, the if your previous version was, is a 3.20.6 and then you hit save as here and it just happens to be .8 or .9 of a new version, click save, it'll automatically uninstall your old one and install your new one and give you any new features, updates, um, and stuff like that. Now I am running a newer version which has the resize and cropping which has just been released and uh, so uh, you would need to hit your update on your system if you don't have this option. Um, newer uh, features such as a uh, filter to where it will automatically show you a simulation of what it would work is in process now and I have a prototype of that. Uh, it is coming along nicely and should be released shortly. So check your update button, button uh, frequently and then uh, when you print to the laser system uh, you're going to get all kinds of nice effects. And so if I wanted to, for example, engrave on wood or plastic or any other type of material, uh, you can see here I can get very nice effects on different types of woods. Uh, different types of woods are going to give you different effects. So if I were to run into like a maple wood, yeah, this is a much smaller image of a maple wood, um, different types of a cherry wood, you can see that I can get all different types of effects, uh, mahogany. Um, and so, but other materials as well. I mean, you can get into it to the point where maybe I wanted to engrave on marble. And as you can see, the, the image clarity and quality is stunning. Now, if you want the absolute best results, the high density or HPDFO lens is preferred for best photography type engraving. But a 1.5 is the next best, followed by the 2.0, all of which can be done. Most of the samples I will run is run on a 2-inch lens just to show you that uh, it can be done. For example, this nice uh, leather picture was done with a 2-inch lens, no problem. Um, this is a 5 by 7 piece of uh, leather that was engraved on, uh, which is a standard elk image. Or here's a, here's a small horse image as well. Um, you can get into some of the more exotic materials, such as stainless steel. Here's a very large piece of stainless steel that I engraved with a Thermark or Surmark compound. It was sprayed on. This is 24 by 18. So very, very large, the size of a, a medium-sized laser machine. Um, but uh, as you can see, the, the finished results are, are very, very nice and allow you to basically engrave on all different types of plaques, woods, uh, stainless steel. In this case, uh, here's some clear acrylic. It was just a block of acrylic that was reverse engraved, and I set it on a black backing and uh, engraved it using the one-touch settings. Uh, the, the quality is stunning. And recently, I've done some more work on some exotic materials, like a piece of agate. Agate is, uh, believe it or not, engraves it very well. It gives us an extremely gr good tonal range and uh, works well. Um, and even though there may not be a setting on the one-touch photo for agate, I can just use something similar like the stone setting or marble or granite setting. That's all I used in this case because it, it produces the similar effect. So any questions on one-touch laser photo, feel free to ask us. Um, you can download it uh, at versalaser.com or ulsinc.com for a free 30-day trial if you want to play with it and try it and if you just uh, you know, want to see if it, how it's going to work on your system. It doesn't matter how old your system is. If you have an older system, you can very quickly and easily still install it. You just can't use the print direct option. So within one-touch, I can't select print and print it to like a, oh, a M360 or an V460 or an X series. Um, however, you can hit save, save that graphic to a drawing program such as CorelDRAW or Illustrator, and then run it from there. That works just fine. Any questions, again, hit your help command or contact applications at ulsinc.com or contact your distributor uh, uh, or your representative of your laser system and they can help you as well. Okay, uh, one different type of photography that I want to cover here is also uh, uh, HDR photography, standing, stands for High Dynamic Range. Uh, high Dynamic Range photography is a very new process and something that I want to basically show you to do for those photographers out there. There is uh, several different ways to create an HDR. Um, there's new softwares that allow you to create an HDR from an original graphic, or for the best results, you need to actually create it from scratch using your digital SLR camera. And the way an HDR photo is actually generated is four, five, six, and several different photos are taken of a single object using different uh, exposure levels. And so as you can see here, a very, very dark photo was taken of a city. And then as I go through it, I'm going to take several different photos here, and I'm going to take 
a different photo in the same spot with a different exposure level. And again, and again. Each one of them producing a different tonal range at different parts of the photo. And as you can see, each one of them are producing, you know, in this case, the outer surrounding area. And as you can go to the previous ones, better images. And so the, the center part where it's the most bright is the best at the beginning, medium, and as in, and now when I take these graphics and use a software like Adobe Photoshop CS5, which is the full version of Photoshop, this cannot be done in the Elements version, but it will allow you to actually morph these graphics together. And as you can see, the four graphics that I just showed you have been morphed into the image below. So using a special software program, and there's other software programs that actually uh, will do this for you, and you can search online for them. But it, basically, it links all those best components of a single object. In this case, you know, uh, the St. Louis Arch with the Capitol building, um, the Hyatt building behind it, and then each one of those four graphics have been morphed together with a tone curve to give you the entire spectrum of that uh, image. Now the reason I bring this up is because HDR photography or high dynamic range imagery is exceptional for laser engraving. The, the tone range is perfect. You never have to clean up anything. You never have to bring any contrast or mode or change to it. All you have to do is run it through one touch, select the material and hit print. It's going to produce some of the best effects you've ever seen. So as you can see here, I'm going to show you a few HDR photograph or photos, and as you can see, the 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 image clarity is uh, stunning. You can't uh, reproduce this any other way. Um, it it actually goes beyond the visible spectrum, and I'm going to zoom in here. You can see things that it almost starts to look eerie how how real they look. Um, here's a full version of the previous one that I just did, that basically show you the uh, the um, the full clarity and quality that you can get by converting and morphing these images together. And you can't see any seam from the, the spectrum of light that was done. A couple different other HDR photos. As you can see here, phenomenal tone range. Um, details like the, the, the streaks of the, the sun itself. You can see these, uh, see things through it that you couldn't see uh, with a camera. A camera eye just doesn't produce these things and this effect. Um, it gives you uh, shadows and shadings and, and, and stuff that were uh, used to be shadows and, and dark areas and make them almost look animated. But they're not. They're actually taken with a standard digital camera. They set it on a tripod. They set it up to a multiple stage uh, uh, setup. And you can do a macro on your camera where it's a one push of a button and you get an image like this. Now, uh, Photoshop and some other softwares have also generated softwares that generate graphics from scratch. But as you can see, if you do this correctly with a photographer, um, you can get phenomenal results. Basically, see in the dark, as you can see in this cityscape right here. Different graphics like this, which just mind-popping colors and details, uh, almost again look animated, produce phenomenal engravings. And from this image itself to the engraved image, you can see those tone mappings, uh, the, the mid-tone spectrum, the dynamic range of that graphic it engraves in this piece of, uh, in this case, this is a piece of uh, cherry wood that was engraved in. You can see the grains of the wood, you can see how it was engraved, but you can see if I go back to the previous graphic, before and after, how well it actually kept most of those to tone ranges and curves. And so here's another example of an HDR graphic. Again, very little shadows, very little highlights, and then here it is engraved on a piece of glass. Believe it or not, glass. Yeah, it was a black piece of glass that I engraved. Um, and then uh, I rubbed a white paint into that uh, glass to kind of bring it out, giving you some better contrast, which you can also do on marble or any polished surface material, acrylic, marble, glass, gr granite, stuff like that. But as you can see before, and after. Phenomenal details are brought out. One Touch brings out a lot of the highlights and the details, and like in the jacket, for example, here, uh, where, uh, uh, where uh, to the point where it almost uh, it just pops, it just comes out. The detail on her stockings, the cat, everything else. So as you go back to the original graphics, you can kind of get an understanding of what uh, how these graphics are morphed together to produce these type of uh, uh, results. And the, this type of imagery. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and rush and buy an expensive camera and walk through and try to figure out how to do this for every graphic. However, photo sites like dreamstime.com 
and Shutterstock.com or even Google Images you can type HDR graphics or HDR photography and you can download hundreds if not thousands of HDR graphics already so they're already out there for you that's where I got most of these graphics like this one was from dreamstime.com uh, they pick them up for about two dollars or three dollars each on these or if you just want to see them go to Google Images um, type in the uh, HDR and you'd be surprised what you get so that's HDR photography, and uh, if you want to uh, make a, uh, uh, a plaque that really, really pops and allows you to pop out, you don't need to do anything to this graphic. Just run it through one-touch laser photo for the material and print it using your, your laser settings for that material. And uh, you're going to get a, a phenomenal example piece, uh, great for demonstrating what your capabilities of your laser system is. Again, power settings can affect this, uh, as well as uh, if the, the wrong lens or if you're out of focus or if you do use the wrong power setting. So there, there is still a little skill set in that, but it will eliminate you know, that difficulty of a dark shadowing effect or a poor graphic quality as well. So that is HDR photography. Any questions, again, uh, contact us, and we will... Uh, uh, help you out on this manner as well. Well, that's it. Thank you for your time. And any questions, feel free to contact us again. And we hope that we were able to help you out with your laser engraving needs. Again, my name is David Stevens with Universal Laser Systems.